Hi, everyone. My name is Georgette True, and I work for attorney Vincent Davis, and I am the host for Fight CPS with Miss G. And I have my lovely Stacy, my co host, Hi, my one and only. And uh, we have Valerie back today. She was on the show last night with us, and I wanted her back today. I promised her on the show that I will get her a Florida a, a, a CPS defense attorney in Florida, and I found one. I had the pleasure of speaking with his legal assistant. She's amazing. Um, she understood the fight. Um, I'm going to have Valerie contact them right after the show today. And I'm just happy to, you know, to help her because she definitely need help. And this is a good case. Stacy, take over because you have to go back to work. You have the first 30 minutes, Stacy. Okay, Ms. G, thank you. Yes, it was wonderful. So, um, Valerie, I don't know if you saw some of the comments when we shared your show between uh, last night and today. Um, but one of the, the oh no comments, I didn't yeah one of the comments to the show is this woman she was outraged about lying social workers and she's like this story needs to be shared nationally it's so horrific if they lie to take your children Aww. yeah yeah so um, and right. you know and um, I just think what Miss G is doing for you is so wonderful because so many times. We find uh, some attorneys, yeah. they work for the other side and they help CPS out instead of helping their client out. And uh, we were talking yesterday about how um, when you wanted witnesses subpoenaed to court, your attorney didn't do that for you, but your opposition, CPS, was allowed to bring in all these other witnesses to say all these horrible things about you that you weren't able so necessarily mm -hmm. to review because you were not allowed your witnesses by your own attorney. And that's pretty much to the effect of what we discussed yesterday, right? Right. And so today you had court, right. right? And what happened? No, I went to, I just went to court. Oh, you went to court. I'm that's right. Today for you... court in December to get right. the subpoenas. Yes. And so how did that get go prepared, when you tried to get but, um, Of course, my attorney did not assist. When I went when I went to the um to the second floor to get the subpoenas, there were five different ones. Um, three of them are for attorneys, and then two of them are for per se clients, people that are fighting on their own. And when I called my attorney, I'm like, hey, I have it right in front of me. You know, could you help me? Of course, he never answered the phone. Never answered the phone. I've done this several times. I have my brother contact him. And we call three way, and then he finally answers. I mean, he's deliberately avoiding me. As things get worse, the more he avoids me. As I'm getting cops called on me, as I'm not seeing my son 91 times, 91 visits, he's ghost. He's ghost. He cannot support me in any manner until 30 minutes before court. And then he's like, yeah, let's talk. Let's talk. <laughs> I'm like, everything bad has happened already. And, and it's going to we get worse. And we were talking yesterday about the importance of being able to subpoena witnesses because they're asking you to, to submit to having a court for a uh, forensic evaluation, a psychological evaluation done. And a lot of times uh, CPS will pick cherry pick their own uh, forensics that depend on them to 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 you know refer them more cases and so they're inclined to write reports that please cps so they get more and more cases and so uh when that happens and then you want to take testimony from the uh alleged expert then if you have an attorney that's reluctant to subpoena people for you this is going to be a problem if you have a court forensic report done mm -hmm. so we talked about that and then we also talked yesterday about um, affidavits and the, and the use of affidavits to correct the record. Because if you have a lying social worker and they say things under oath to the court, there's a lot of case law, even from our U.S. Supreme Court, that unreviewed statements under oath or in an affidavit left unreviewed are actually accepted by the court as fact. So if you have an attorney that's silencing you from correcting the record by getting your statements that review what the social workers are saying, then the court's going to accept what the social workers are saying as fact. 
and I think you were describing that that happened to you once before as well. Right. So, um, so many yes. things. Yes, and uh, in addition to the negative things that were being said. Oh, sorry. My phone is breaking up. Hello? Can yep, you I'm here. Still? Yeah, I can hear you, Del. Hello? I can hear okay. you. In addition to them not correcting the record, he even said something wrong. He said that I didn't have a car. When I did have a car, I was just saying that the meeting place for the visits are far. And he just threw me on the bus and said, she doesn't have a car. Give her a bus ticket. Yeah, and, um, and we were talking, too, about how um, they took your child with medical needs um, based on, um, I guess, hearsay mm -hmm. allegations of neglect, but once put into the group home that has no medical uh, support, now is missing all these doctor's appointments. And now he, if he was allegedly neglected before, mm -hmm. he certainly is neglected now in, in the state's care, correct? Absolutely correct. You know, in where I live in New York State, their letterhead for CPS it says something along the lines of um, helping families. Would you consider this as helping families to take your child and actually neglect him uh, by not taking him to school or to his doctor's appointments? Because I think you even said he's not even going to school now. Would you say that that's He's not families? even going to school because the nurse doesn't want to take him to school. No, it's destroying the child. Um, they had many options. They could have um, monitored me with him in the home. They could have gave me services in the home and they neglected to do that. They had other options. They did not have to take him and neglect him now. So though I don't think they help at all, quite honestly. I think they destroy the child character they'll destroy her financially they'll destroy her in many ways i talk about this often it, it seems to always come up in shows but um in 2018 there's an act and it's something along the lines of uh, family first act and there's a little bit more to the title but it was in 2018 and the reason for the for this act is because research shows children thrive better when kept in their family so even mm -hmm. though I don't think that you were neglectful to your son, even if you were, mm -hmm. it's best for your son to stay within your family. And in New York State, I can say um, kinship members include godparents and uh, close friends of the family. So you don't even have to be blood. And by law, by fed this federal mm -hmm. um, act, by law, CPS is supposed to extinguish a search for a suitable family member before removing the child from the family and again if a termination of parental rights is adjudicated they're supposed to search again for a family a suitable family member before they put children into the care of strangers but they routinely nitpick away mm -hmm. family members because they get more money by placing children into foster care and the way that happens is title IV federal funding so uh, Title IV federal funding, when they put kids into foster care in the care of strangers, there's no cap on how much money the state can get from the federal government for doing that. But if they keep children in the family, there is a cap on federal funding to the state when they keep children in the family. So that's why there were probably, if it couldn't be you, many other family members, close friends of the family that could have helped you with your son, but instead they ripped him away from where research says he would have thrived better and put him into this uh, care, we'll put say quote unquote, unquote of strangers instead of <laughs> with his family. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Absolutely. <laughs> you said it actually is, it, um, it's destroying me, my son, you know, I, I in many ways that I, I every day. I, I can't put it to words. I'm still having to learn how to deal with it. Uh, I know my son, he, does, he can't even speak to advocate for himself, but lost the only person 
because I've ever take care of, um, taking care of him a long time ago because she passed away when the case started. I mean, before the case started. So he lost two people. So that right. hurts. That hurts him double, you know. And the, and the, I, and the, cons- and, and in terms of, and, and in terms of our, our family rights, you know, when the government is supposed to be the least intrusion possible to keep the child safe. So I don't see ripping a child away from its family and putting them again into quote unquote the care of strangers that aren't taking him to school and um, aren't getting him his edu- you know his his uh, doctor's appointments. I, in my opinion, I don't think that that's minimum intrusion to keep the child safe. That's uh, invasion and harming your child. I think Valerie's having some problems with her phone. She had some problems yesterday. Oh my God, Valerie. Hi, Ms. G. Hi, baby. I'm trying to, to I have blinds and I'm, I'm trying to block the sun from, you know. At least you have sun. You know what? I know you want sunshine. I love, of course, God's giving sunshine to us, but I'm more of a snow person. Are you? Maybe we should switch. Do a switcheroo? Yes, please do. <laughs> I would love, 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 love to wake up to snow every day. Yeah? Oh, yeah. You're welcome. Come on over. I don't like, I don't, I don't like the heat. I don't like the heat at all. Me and heat do not mix whatsoever. I just want to say hi to my tiny animal family. I love you so much. <laughs> and I wanted to say hi to G Sin. G Sin. I can't say her name. G sense. There you go. Hi, baby. Mwah. Love you guys. And there was something that was written on here. Um, they asked, G sense asked, what state is she in? Go ahead and what state? You're in Florida, right? I'm in Florida. She's in Florida, but she's not going to say the county. Yeah. So if you want that attorney's name, um, his paralegal's name is um, Chloe. She's very sweet. Um, I can give it to you, G Sense, when when I'm done with the show. Okay. And then Cheryl Huff. Hi, Cheryl. She said, "Get you a federal attorney." So Mr. Davis does all of that. He's like a well-rounded attorney. He's also a federal attorney. But I did not ask um, Valerie if that attorney does federal cases. Lawsuit cases. Yeah, I don't know. Some attorneys don't do that. Am I right, Stacy? Because I don't know if all attorneys do that. Sure. Right. Yeah. So I'm gonna. You can ask him when you call him. Okay. When you speak to Chloe, you can ask, or you can email Chloe. I got you both both numbers. I got you the phone number and her email address. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you have to go through her. So what were you saying, mm-hmm. Stacy? Because I know you you've got to go to work. What were you saying to Valerie before she got disconnected? Well, it's so awful. We were talking about how um, the government is supposed to be minimum intrusion possible to keep a child safe. And she had suitable family members and friends to help and support her. And instead, they ripped the child away and didn't even do anything to keep the child safe because now the child isn't going to school and isn't making it to doctor's appointments. So I don't even know what you call that. So what, I don't know if you remember her story from last night. Just want to touch base. I mean, touch, touch up a little bit on it. Her story is that her son is special needs. Her son needed special attention. As a a concerned mother, she called for help. Right. No abuse there. She takes him to the doctors on time. She has, even doctors cannot believe that her son is not with her. Um, Social workers are not taking her son to his exams. Um, the son, the child looks like he hasn't showered for decades. Um, the child doesn't look like he's being nourished at all. And the fact that CPS takes children who are taken care of and place them in they in in places where they neglect them, then they blame the mother when the mother never neglected them. The mother, in fact, was taking care of her son. And doctors can be under oath and testify against that. I mean, against their action towards this mother. Doctors and nurses respect her because she never missed a visit. 
And now that she missed a lot of visits, supposedly her, when it's not her, she keeps telling them it's not me. It's not me. I don't have them. I don't have them. So what they do is they take the child to their doctor who knows nothing about the child. Well, this other doctor knew so much about the child from since the child was a baby. So if you guys really think about it for a minute, they do not, do not want the, the doctor to see that child. Right. An active doctor he has been in his life. But they want their own doctor to see this child after the child was neglected by the home the child was in. Think about it for a second. So that doctor that works for CPS sees the child neglected. The child is not nourished. What do you think the doctor is going to say? They're not going to tell the doctor this child was placed in a group home. They're going to tell the doctor this child was with the mother. Then that doctor is going to say, oh, my God, she neglected the child. Then that doctor is going to write a, a, a letter to the court saying how the mother neglected the child. But that doctor is an idiot. Let me tell you why. That's how stupid they are. That doctor was also a setup by CPS. Yes, they work through CPS, but it was also a setup by CPS. So a demonic person will never stop playing games. Okay? You get it now? No matter what you think, you think they're cool, you think they're this, you think they're that, they will never stop playing games. And when this happens, they will go against your child and they will actually make you look like you're the perpetrator. There is actually nothing else to say about that, but that's the God honest truth. That's how they operate. Miss G is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Spot on. It's the truth. She's, telling, she's the she's the she's the CPS ghost of past, present, and future. She'll tell you what happened, how it's going, and what they're gonna do. And and you know what? I don't honest to God, Stacy, like Valerie said earlier, yet yeah, last night. Everything I said was going to happen, it happened. And I, it's, it, I, you know what? It's a blessing from God, but I'm telling you guys right now, wise up, wake up, and you have to document everything. I, I can't emphasize enough to you how much it's important because we want a case out of state by the client documenting everything. I mean, that woman was prepared. You need to pre be prepared. Help your attorney help you because we don't live in your life. We need to know more about what's going on. So, but you guys cannot take matters in your own hand and say, I haven't seen my child. I have to call the police. I have to do this. I have to do that because you become so anxious and so out of control that you forget that you're doing this. So you need to suck it up. And I mean that with all due respect and all love. Suck it's hard it up. work. Hard yeah. Work. Yeah. Suck it up until you get your child or children back. Then you move in for the humiliation of DCFS. I mean, that's all I can tell you. But right now, suck everything up and play the cards right, play the game right, and get your child back. That's important. I'm in. I make beautiful music. Please follow up. I'm not sure what this is about. Okay. Um, they absolutely do that even here in Canada. Yes, in Canada is getting worse. Thank God, uh, Smunch name. Um, they actually, I've heard a lot of people in Canada telling me that the attorneys are getting worse. And now they, uh, one attorney in Canada was disbarred. Um, he lost his license because he was helping a CPS. He's a CPS defense attorney or was, and he literally lost his job because he went against the judge. Okay, so uh, they're trying to silence attorneys, but no weapon formed against good attorneys will ever prosper. No weapon, because God is not doesn't like ugly, and I keep telling you guys this: God is doesn't like ugly. And right now, God is He is literally now waking people up. I'm telling you, you do evil to others, it will be done unto you a thousandfold. There is no no mercy when it comes to God. Miss right Jesus. Now, Right now, don't even think about hurting God's children. Don't even think about it unless you want to lose your whole life. Uh, Smunch Names also said, even when you document everything, CPS still lies and makes stuff up. That Right, but that's that's okay. Let them make stuff up. That's how you win a civil lawsuit, right? Because you have evidence they don't. So you can back up your statement. They can't. 
Right. So that's how you play it smart. Smart. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then she also said behind the lines, they talk to judges and get it going their way. True. They do. Judges are in on it. We get that part. They will never side with you, especially if you're a mother. I guarantee you. If you're not the abuser, you will be the perpetrator in their eyes. That's why I call them demonic. She also went on saying, I help a lady, I help a lady, and she has gotten got got most of her kids back now. Okay. Um, but it took four years. I have been helping her for eight. Okay. She has a good attorney. She got them all back. Great. That's so good to hear. Yeah, she is going to sue after. Good. Now, there's a statue of limitation, okay? I think right now, I think it's um, the children that have the right to sue. Um, I don't think the mother can sue, but the children have the right to sue, okay? That's from my understanding from attorney David. All right? So I covered all you guys' comments, and hopefully I covered everyone as much as I can. And um, and that's it. Anything you're you always say? you're always right, Miss G. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Yes, you are. No. Yes, you are. No, 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 we we had these kind. conversations. We had these conversations yesterday, and then Valerie went to the court to try and get people subpoenaed, and all she got was resistance instead of accommodation. Oh, that's what she said. Yes. Ah. Uh. So I'm not just okay. I'm not just saying it. I'm saying it for a reason because we, you know, we, we were talking about yesterday, happened today. Well, it's the grace of God that He gets the He gets the glory, really. He I, maybe maybe I'm speaking his what he wants what he wants you guys to know. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking what he wants you guys to know. Um, bad. Sir Webb said, I heard Mr. Davis once say there's a motion that you can file to ask for a hearing to give in room that wasn't given prior. That is true. A motion is, to compel? Depending on what is happening in the case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, but I, yeah, I think that's what she meant, right? I'm not sure. I don't no. know. There's so many motions. Which motion I right? right Miss G, I have to, several motions. I have to go can... back to work, my love, okay? Did you hear me, Miss G? Yes. Hey. I'm sorry, I have to go back to work. Bye. Thank you, Stacy. I love you. you. I'll see you tonight, okay? Love you too. Right. Good luck, Valerie. Bye. Okay, and um, Smush name said it was a long battle and 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 a shame that her young kids did not get to grow up with her except the last one. To see them walk, CFS just don't care about things. No, honey, they don't care. You have to understand when I tell you guys they're they're possessed by demons understand this if you're christian you'll understand that demons need a body to nest in it without that body to nest in it they can't do their evil plans right so usually they will choose a evil person to nest in it a person that will destroy somebody's life just for because they're jealous of them or because they're envy of them all of that is demonic because envy and jealousy is from satan not from god so if you're possessed with those, you better believe that you're possessed with a demon, okay? Bad Girl Web says, yes, that's what I meant. Good. Um, Smush name said, bye, Stacey. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm reading this. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any more questions, if you guys in another state and you're looking for an attorney, please let me know. Um, I will find you the right attorney. I usually, what I do is I call them. I communicate with their legal assistant. We either connect or, you know, doesn't doesn't work out because they don't want to do the case or what have you. But let me know the county and the state your case is in. You can email me at, where is my, uh, you can email me at G-A-T, 
at vincentwdavis.com. Um, Smush said, they toss those kids back and the mom at the mom, and it is very hard to get them back to normal. Like I said earlier, what they do, especially for those of you guys that were not listening, I want you to listen to this carefully. The reason they take your child to their doctor is because after so many months of the child missing their doctor visits, and they're not with the mother's cust in the mother's custody. They put the children in a group home or a foster home. They neglect the children. Then CPS takes them to their doctor. Then their doctor says, these children are neglected. But the neglect came from the foster home or the group home the children were in, not the actual parent. Okay? Because we all know that neglected children are left in the state custody. They're not, I mean, they're not in the state custody. They're not taken to the state. Okay, so neglected children, they stay with the, with the abuser until they either die or get beaten to near death. Okay, so as according to the system, neglected children is abused goods. But that's what the system was created for to begin with. But the supervisors and the state and the state are so used to the money coming in that they're not, they're not checking anything out. They're not, they don't care because money keeps coming in. And that money comes from you, me, and everyone who pays taxes because that comes out of our, the money that we make. Why? To pay their salary. And why are we paying their salary? Because we're stupid. Because America cannot seem to be getting it together. You know why? Because a lot of Americans think that the ones that lose their children are the actual perpetrators. When in fact, they're not. Because they don't follow the history. They only go by the name, Child Protective Services. That's it. That's it. That's all they go by. But what they don't understand is that it's deeper than that. It's deeper. That name sounds great. But behind that name is some deep-rooted darkness. And it's away from the public's eyes. But the ones who are dealing with those demons are the ones that can speak about it. And the ones that have a voice. But the ones who are not dealing with them don't have a voice. They don't speak about it because they don't know anything about it. That's why I tell you guys, educate, educate, educate. Can't emphasize that enough to you. Ms. G, Badger said, Ms. G, I am the lady who sent you a couple of texts last week. You responded the next day while you were at work. Honey, you know how many people send me a couple of taxes? I mean, tax, Texas, you need to remind me, but not on the show. Just text me again right now and remind me, okay? Um, Christmas said, for those who are losing hope, do not stop pay praying. Please read Luke 18. Amen to that. You guys need to read Luke 18. So let's read it together. Okay. Luke 18. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in the town who kept coming to him with the plea. Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care, what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. That's what he said. Not Jesus, but the enemy. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. The unjudge, the unjust judge, that rhymes so well, says... And will not will and will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones who cry out who cry out to Him day and night? Will He keep putting them off? I tell you, He will see that they get justice and quickly. I tell you. However, when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith on the earth? It's a question mark. Unjust. 
judges will be punished. Believe me. But God, Jesus said, don't give up and don't give up asking God. Don't. I want you guys to understand God hears us. God is with us. But God wants to strengthen your faith with him. Because God is a God of truth and love. When God knows that your intention is not pure. And when God knows that your only intention is to get to know him, to get what you want. Or to deceive other people with his name. God is awake and he understands what your intentions are. So I need you guys to keep praying. And may your heart be pure requesting for him to be in your life. You need to ask God to be in your life because he is not going to be forcing himself on you to love him. All he wants is love unconditionally, not 50% of the time or 5% of the time, but all the time. And thank you, Leo, for sharing this. I love you for that. Thank you so much. Um, Badger Webb said, I appreciate the reply, man. Okay. I will reply. The more kids they take, the more money they make, even in Canada. That is correct. I don't know how what the incentives are in Canada, but you're absolutely right. America is currently spiritually bankrupt. America is, yeah, spiritually bankrupt. You're absolutely right. Bad girl said, I realize that. Okay, we'll do. Okay. So just keep up the good work, guys. Um, oh, letter, here is, sorry, Valerie. I just saw that. <laughs> So I've been sorry. waiting. <laughs> I am so sorry. It's okay. I was. So I had to drive. I had to drive all the way to McDonald's because my Wi-Fi was not working, and I was like, "I'm not gonna miss out everything that you guys are telling me." Well, but, um, yes. Never stop praying, guys. Never stop praying. Yeah. Oh. Did you read? Did you see uh, Luke 18? Yes, I did. Never stop praying. Luke 18 is, is amazing. Yeah. And then I want to read something else. Um, I already read Luke 18, but there's another one. It says, um, to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told them, told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God. I thank you, I thank you, that I am not like other people. That's what the Pharisee prayed, okay? The robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector, that's what he said to God. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but, but beat his breast like this and said, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. You see that? Mm -hmm. You see the difference between the prayers, guys? Have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. He's humbled. He humbled himself in front of God. But the other one, the Pharisee, you know, they think they're they're the best because they, they talk to God and they, you know, do this and this and then and then they're better than everyone else. Okay, that's arrogance. That's not from God. Mm -hmm. When you humble yourself. That's from God. When you don't hurt other people, don't hurt them. That's from God. So when everyone that does evil to you, don't do evil back because that's when you remove God from your myth. That's very important. Okay. Um, then he said, I tell you, Jesus said that this man rather than the other went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humble. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Okay? Because that Pharisee exalted himself. God is going to humble him. You know how? Very bad trials in life. Mm -hmm. Very bad trials in life is going to humble this man or this mm -hmm. woman or this person. Okay? Regarding the children, Jesus uh, um, and Jesus. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hand on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. 
never enter it. I don't care if you're wearing a cross with holy oil all over it, okay? Jesus didn't say that. I'm telling you guys that. The rich and the kingdom of God. A certain, a certain ruler asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? That's what Jesus said. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and your mother. When God said, honor your father and your mother, honor the good fathers and the good mothers, the ones who are actually doing the right thing in life. If you have bad parents, do not honor them, but respect them, okay? All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing, one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is impossible. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter said to him, we have left all we have to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brother or sister or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. So when you guys think of the, tri the trials and tribulation we're facing right now in life, all this stuff is for demons to stop us from believing in God and for us to say there is no God and, and not talk about him or pray to him. That's the whole goal. So Satan will make sure something happens in your life because that's why he has little demons following him, right? So he will make sure something happens in your life. Why? Because he doesn't want you to believe anymore. He wants you to think God is not with you. He wants you to think that witchcraft is the answer. He wants you to be around evildoers, making you think that this is the right way and these people can help. Remember, Satan doesn't come with horns and a tail and, you know, a red body. Satan comes in a very pleasant form, meaning Satan will come as a person that, you know, talks to you a little bit here and there, and you think these people are legit, okay? People like that are not legit. Legit people don't expect anything in return. Legit people will direct you to the right people, but unjust people and deceitful people will direct you to the wrong plan, okay? God knows their heart, like I said, and they know they know their intention. God will send you people to talk sense into you. If you don't listen, then God lets you do what you want to do. He's not going to make you. He's not going to force you because Jesus came and cleansed our sins. So now we have choices to make. God sends us people to help us. Also, Satan sends you people. So you have to reply and say to yourself, how should I handle this situation? So you get down on your knees in your room, away from people, and silently ask God to give you discernment. Discernment, you'll be able to discern between evil and good in front of you. Because as humans, we like to hear good things. We like to hear people that wants to help us. But oftentimes, Satan will come to you in that form as well. Please, I'm begging you. Don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everyone that tells you they can help you. Don't believe everyone that tells you uh, they help people get their kids back who are there just to take a small, you know, incentive, incentive from you. And they're not even sitting attorneys. Remember this. People think that they can do what an attorney can do. That's false. They can't do what an attorney can do. I have seen Attorney Davis, and I do most of the paperwork for him, and I know what goes on, and it's a lot of freaking work, a lot of work involved, especially reading your case and how crazy your case is. 
and how much the other attorneys destroyed your case to the point where we have to do double work just to understand what happened, what that attorney did based on what the workers wrote. So basically, it becomes so complex. And not everybody's case is the same. If somebody got their kids, doesn't mean you're going to get your kids if you go with that person. It depends on your case. That's why you have to help your attorney help you. That is very important. Um, somebody wrote something here. Did you hear all that, Valerie? Yes. Um, and I also remember you saying, pray for your attorney. Pray yes. for your attorney. Pray I also attorney. remember you. Yeah, I also remember you saying, like, even though you don't have your kids with you, prepare the house like you have your kids. You know, buy toys for them, buy clothes for them, buy little things for them because they are coming home. You know, I remember you saying, kiss your kids tonight, even though they're not near you. Pray for them. You know, pray for your kids. I remember you saying that. And yep. I every time when I got really confused in my case, well, my case is very confusing. You know, my attorney doesn't contact me until moments before the case. So that doesn't help. And when I hear the, what they have, it's like they pulled the discovery up there, out there. But, yep. and I'm like, that's not true. And inside, I'm, I'm falling apart. And sometimes I can't even walk straight out the courtroom. I'm so distraught. But what I do, I say, you know what, God, I'm putting this in your hands because it already happened. There's nothing I can do about it. No, and God knows what's going to happen. But see, people think God is not with them, like I said, but God told you to <coughs> lean on him. But we're no. not leaning on him 100%. No. You guys don't understand that. We only want God when something happens to us. I'll give you an example, yeah. me. I'm the biggest fool there is. Let me tell you. I used to just go to God. You know, I always been to church, always prayed, always, you know, this and that. But I wasn't 100% with God because I would pray like a short prayer here and there. And then things are going great. Then when something was going bad, then I found myself spending a long, longer time with God. Now, that's not being truthful to myself or to God. But God is so merciful and so loving. God wants you to humble yourself to say, God, I need you to work on me. I'm not with you 100%. I want to be with you 100%. So I used to go to church, not every Sunday. Before I used to go every Sunday. Then I stopped going every Sunday. Then I would go some Sunday here, some Sunday there, stuff like that. Recently, I made a promise to God. I said, God, I'm going to go to church every Sunday, I promise you. And I'm going to start participating in Sunday school again. And I had a fall. I fell two days before Sunday and a couple of days before Sunday and I injured my knee badly. And I felt so bad that I made a promise to God and I can't go. So I talked to him. I said, I'm so sorry. I made a promise. I'm not going to be able to go. I'm in pain right now. And, you know, talking to him like he's my friend, right? You will hear God. You know how you will hear God? You will hear him when you're talking to him and you have peace here. When you have peace here, that means that's God comforting you. That's why we have the Holy Spirit in us. Because that's a way of God communicating with us. When you talk to God, talk to him like he's your friend. And he will answer you. I kid you not. When you are not with your children, behave as though you are with your children. And I think that's what Valerie was trying to say. Behave as you are, as you were when you were with your children. So that right there, when you show the devil that you don't believe in his schemes and that you are victorious because God is with you, the devil will eventually give up. The demon will give up. They don't They don't stop because they don't sleep. They actually have meetings as to why their scheme didn't work with certain people. Then they come up with a different scheme. I kid you go not. They, have harder. Harder. <laughs> huh? they do. They like, go after her harder. It's not yeah. working. Yeah. And they use quotes in the Bible. There's this 
demonic person I know. I found that late in in the in the you know my journey with with this person trying to help him. I found out late that he's he's actually a demon. He's possessed by a demon, and it's sad but true. So this person would like quote from the Bible, and I'm like, okay, he's God is working on him. God is doing this with him. God is doing that. But in reality, he wasn't. He was just doing that to get people to believe him. And this person is starting really bad things. And that's why I said, be careful. Be careful who you entertain. Because you're going through a very bad situation right now. Be careful who you entertain. Because those people that are dealing with the same situation, there was a reason for what happened to them. But they want you guys to think they're helping you. But they're not helping you. They just want to see how much they can take from you in your desperation. That is not an act of God. That is an act of a demon. Okay? So you guys need to be careful who you entertain. And as God is my witness, if you ask God to reveal those people to you, he will. But you have to distinguish between the voice of God and the voice of Satan. Because remember, Satan can also quote you from the Bible, and that's how he tricks Christian people. Okay? So... I've learned a lot in life, you guys. I've learned a lot. I've learned my relationship with God wasn't strong enough, even though I thought it was. But going to church is not enough. Taking communion is not enough. Teaching Sunday school is not enough. Being a good mother is not enough. You need to give your whole life to God. And you have to be able to live a pure life, meaning you have to cleanse all the clutter from your world. You have to cleanse your heart. And that's the only way, honestly, to be able to hear the voice of God. And tell him you're, you need him. Just tell him you need him, that you can do this without him. And he will work on you. But believe me, it works. It really, really works. God is good. Lean to him. Don't lean on your own understanding. And that you will see a lot of good results in your life. And I think that was God that made me tell you my 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 strategy of getting the the caseworker a restraining order. And you said no, yeah. don't do that. Don't do that because when I talked about other when I said it to other people that was outside of my case, they were like, Oh, that's good. You're smart. You're smart. They're not gonna take it. No, do not lean on your own understanding. No, you know, when not. you yeah. yeah, when you have a decision to make. Pray about it. Like humbly, like clear your mind and be like, God, whatever thought you're going to put in my mind, please, it be from you. Because we think that we're smart. We're not. We think we're smart. We're not. We're not. We're not. And then when I go to court, they were like, you got a restraining order. Why did you do that? And I'm going to be like, because she was bothering me. I'm like, no. Nope. It doesn't look good for you. That's why a lot right. of people say, oh, it's in the law book. Well, you know how hard it is to read the law book? Do you know right. how hard it is to understand the law book? There's professors out there that teach the law books. So for people to say, oh, this is what I understood from the law book, that's not true. They're right. giving people the wrong advice. Because the way they word it in the law books is greater than your normal understanding mind. Why? Because you haven't gone to school to be an attorney. You haven't spent hours and hours and hours in agony with a professor from hell trying to explain the law to you and you're understanding in a different way from what you're reading. Because remember this, I can read the Bible, but I can interpret it my own way. That's why when you ask God to give you discernment, he will help you interpret it the way God intended it to be. The only way a Bible or any book will be interpreted wrong is when you're not with God. I'm telling you right now, if you're not one-on-one -on -one with God, everything you read and everything you see and hear is going to be misleading other people because Satan wants somebody to mislead someone because he wants you to be in more pain and more agony and torment. And without our children, what are we? We become in torment. And that's why he uses the children against us because the children are the closest thing to God. So be smart, be wise. And I'm sorry That's if so you're not. True. Amen. Listening. Yeah. But, you know, I'm speaking to those who, um, who are Christian out there. 
All right. So now I'm going to go. Thank you, Valerie, for, for joining me again. If you want to make this a regular Valerie with me and Stacy, let me know. You can. Yes, I will. But okay, but you have to go somewhere that that has Wi-Fi. All right. Okay. Yeah, I will. I'll I'll come here where it has Wi-Fi. And when the cars yeah. drive by, I just mute it. I just mute it, and then um. So I'm still here. I just mute it because I don't want you to hear the cars in the background. Why don't you go to a Starbucks? I know that's so much. It's, it's even closer. I wasn't thinking. It's yeah. even closer. No, that's fine. Yeah, go to a that's Starbucks. Even... It's a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So tomorrow or oh, tonight, you're more than welcome to join us if you like. It's gonna be me and Stacy tonight. Okay. She's not working, so she's gonna be with us the whole full hour. Okay. And you're more than welcome to come. And then you can show us oh. your face. So if you go to Starbucks yes. Park, they, they don't have traffic going in. Yes. Out. There's some Starbucks that their parking lot is not that noisy at all. And oh, you, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I will do. Yeah. And um, hi, painting. I don't know. Charlene Strong. I don't know what you're strange. I'm sorry. Strange. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say, baby. Um, you said, hi, painting at Walmart rocks, trying to get gas for court. Are you painting rocks at Walmart and selling it? Is that what you're saying, Charlene? And then she went on saying, this is so hard al alone. And then she said, people keep approaching. They're hear you, Miss G. Or maybe she meant to say they hear you, Miss G. Oh, gosh, Charlene. I don't even know. Am I understanding this correctly? Yeah, I think she's painting rocks. Guys, if you're short in money and you want to be able to go see your children and you don't have transportation, um, I'm going to find out from Attorney Davis how to approach the situation without making you look like you're unable to care for your kids. Um, I'm going to ask him. But, again, it depends on the state you're in. And certain states don't care. They're just going to label you as, you know, you're unable to provide for your children when, in fact, they're the reason why you cannot provide for your children because you were pro providing just fine. For your kids before they got along so i'm gonna ask attorney davis valerie remind me baby girl to ask him um before tonight's show can you do that for me text me i'll text know. you yeah, yeah i'll text him yeah and then because I'll i have a out. question about uh, that as well if because guys, i had like i had an issue as yeah. well and you know they said they were going to give me gas cards because they made the visiting place more than an hour away and then they never did. They never did. They said it in court. Give her some gas cars or some bus tickets. And then they never said it again. But it does make you look bad if you say that you need help. Okay. I want you to write that too. I want to ask Attorney Davis about that one too. Okay. Text me that part too. Just say in court you asked and the court granted transportation privileges. To help you yeah. for visits, mm -hmm. but they never granted the social worker never granted. Just write that down so I can remember to ask Attorney Davis because I know there's something that he did for one of our clients. Um, I just can't remember. I can't remember. It was for one of our clients because most of the clients we have they have cars already, but some clients lose their job and they have yes. to sell their car to make oh, wow. it so yeah so a lot a lot happens but yeah let me ask attorney davis for you guys and then okay. i will be able to talk about it. all right see you tonight okay. i'll see you tonight see you tonight and be safe okay right. god bless all you right. god bless you. all of you guys, you guys. thank you bye, -bye. Good night.